in our next session, we're going to delve into the world of blockchain education as we discuss how equipping individuals with blockchain knowledge fosters innovation, but also drives the industry growth that we are all excited to see. Plus, we'll gain insights into the educational strategies propelling blockchain forward. This will absolutely be a phenomenal discussion, and it's going to be led by, from Cardano Foundation, Nadia Manel. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. My name is Nadia Manel. I'm the director of Cardano Academy. Um, I'm looking forward to this discussion today, where we talk about advancing blockchain with education. On this panel, we will um, discuss how equipping individuals with blockchain knowledge fosters innovation and industry growth. We'll also align and gain insights into educational strategies and how they are propelling blockchain forward. I'm joined on stage by Loredana, acting head of AI training at Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence, and Marcelo, blockchain crypto token economy and business models innovation specialist, Dr. Yasmina, CEO and academic head at the C Institute, Claudio, Professor of Blockchain and Distributed Leisure Technologies, and Chairman of UCH. I'd like to start this conversation with a bit of focus on industry, um, government, enterprise, and academia, and how equipping individuals with blockchain knowledge fosters innovation and industry growth. So, Loredana, um, as we find ourselves here in Dubai, and for the Sears Cardano Summit, having lived in this region for quite some time and having worked in the government sector. Could you elaborate on your observations on the role governments play in encouraging education and developing the, the economy's appetite for emerging technologies? Thank you, Nadia. First of all, thank you very much for having me. I can see the vibes of uh, the event and it's great, amazing what Cardano has accomplished today. Um, yes, I have lived for a bit in the region, um, having worked also in the government sector. I do believe that um, governments play a crucial role in advancing education mm. by putting um, frameworks in place, strategies in place. And we have the luck of living in the UAE, where this is at the forefront of everything that's happening. So, but I do believe we need to look at this on different perspectives. Governments can be enablers, and that's where they take a proactive approach to putting frameworks and those strategies in place. And this is where they help education alongside. That's the proactive approach that we are seeing mainly in the region and GCC. There is a reactive approach to it. There are several governments who are just standing on the side and, you know, they're looking at the innovation and seeing what's happening and then deciding what's, what's, what to do with it and how to regulate it and how to move forward or how to encourage education in per se. I did notice another behavior. It's a bit, um, it's a bit out of the, the, the norm. I was um, recently in Bolivia. Oh. And for those of you who don't know, Bolivia has banned cryptocurrencies since many, many years. And in conversations with, um, you know, uh, different people, I figured out that they're quite educated on the topic. Hmm. So I was talking about blockchain and, you know, talking about different topics and making jokes around. And then I got curious and I said, how is this possible? So in a country where there is a ban and for their reasons, of course, how is this happening? Hmm. And I figured out that there's another element to using reverse psychology from government side to actually encourage education. So if I were to say to the audience, that door over there, no one opened it, um, it's blocked, prohibited, you don't have to you know, go in it. It is human nature in us 
if not to go and take a peek, it is human nature to at least be curious about what's happening. So everyone would be like, okay, what's happening there? I cannot go in, but is there something we, 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 we can know about, about what's happening behind the door? So it's the same exact um, human element that I noticed in this kind of country where you know people were like, okay, you're banning cryptocurrencies or you're banning technologies, mm. etc. So this is where the reverse psychology element comes into the picture and people were like, let me take a look, what are they you know, prohibiting so much? Indirectly, this is the example where a government, for example, yeah. encouraged education without you know, really encouraging it yeah. openly. Smart. So um, it is crucial for us to, to, to understand why things are done. Mm. And I really love what's happening in the region yeah. because we have you know, the, the FinTech strategy, we have AI strategies, we have recently regulations uh, put in place, metaverse strategies, yeah. etc. All of this has very strongly encouraged education in the region. Mm. So we have a pleura of, of um, education materials to look at. Yeah. I hope that clarifies Does a bit my right. positioning I'll, on that. I like that, the reverse psychology approach. Thank you. Um, moving from governments, uh, Marcelo, you work in the, the private sector or the public sector, but um, your focus is, I wanted to ask you about driving adoption in enterprise. So we spoke about this last week and you said to me, you actually said to me, you don't need to be a dev, you just need to understand the concepts and be able to connect the dots to drive strategy and, implementation, uh, and implement solutions. Can you speak to driving adoption in enterprise and why it's important to educate the sponsors or executives, C-suite, um, and stakeholders first? Um, can you speak to that? Yes. Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, a disclaimer first. Uh, what I say here is not necessarily what my company understand. It's, its position as its position. Well, we are in the middle of a big transformation. This is not about only technology. This is about blockchain games to society, for society, for individuals. And uh, we have to think about this transformation as a social, economical, and cultural, cultural transformation. Of course, uh, innovation uh, in a base, in the background, is technology. but. When you, when you talk with the C-level executive, you, you, have, you have to find this understanding of the new paradigm. Mm. Otherwise, even in an elevator pitch, otherwise, you, you, besides being well prepared, if you don't find this match with the, this, his understanding of what you were talking about, you'll have to have time. So education is also is not only about dev. Okay, new blockchains, not new, but third generation in some blockchains, some some new blockchains, even those that uh, has been around like Ethereum, etc. Uh, they have sh in sometimes shortage shortage of of devs, but I believe we have shortage shortage of understanding these attributes that allows innovation that matches business problems to the toolbox. So we need to educate the market, educate people, educate leaders, educate stakeholders. This is, uh, let, me, let, me, let me give an example. Uh, if, uh, if, if you talk to, to some, most of executives about treasury in crypto, okay, it's getting better now, but for sure, most of them, I believe, it's my opinion, will think about what are you talking about and think the first, the first thing comes in mind is, okay, the crime, okay, this volatility, okay. But they don't think about the opportunity to innovate using this native tokens. Just that, you just have to, this is about enabling processes. So my point is, uh, we need to advance in institutional education, in stakeholder education, yeah. and all working together, all ecosystem working together on it. This rivalry between communities and blockchains, I believe this is not that good for the market as a whole. Everybody, 
will find a place as bigger as it gets. That's my main point here. I can continue later. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Yasmina, you have uh, experience in commercial and as well as in, in academia. And with this unique view, how can blockchain technology enhance transparency um, and accessibility in the education sector? And what are the potential implications of this kind of integration? Thank you very much for that question, and thank you for having me here, uh, Nadia. Uh, so uh, f for me, personally and professionally, and for, as, as a person that's been in the region for more than 20 years, uh, blockchain technology represents uh, something very unique that can solve a number of challenges mm -hmm. when it comes to education. Um, I've been in higher education, I would say 15 years in the region. And anyone who's experienced that has experienced different processes, um, a little bit of bu bureaucracy that is there on the side of uh, uh, certification verification. Uh, this is a, a rather complex process, and anyone who's ever moved uh, from one country to another, and especially here in the UAE, where we have uh, uh, primarily a major uh, majority of population are expats, we have a lot of um, uh, issues with um, credentials fraud and uh, a lot of systems put in place to prevent that from happening. So obviously with that mobility of workforce comes that as a, as a potential issue. Um, I see blockchain technology as potentially solving, uh, a technology that will potentially solve this. So it, it allows for transparency and allows for that trust, especially with, when it comes to uh, credentials, and is potentially removing that big hurdle for, for uh, anyone, uh, let's say, moving, not just to this country, but all around the world, to, uh, to student mobility, Bringing your children here, you know how many hurdles you, you need to go through at the station, uh, verification of all the documents, and this uh, this this is a is a burden on individuals, on students uh, accessing uh, higher education and also primary and secondary schools. Uh, blockchain technology can remove majority of this. Uh, also, uh, there is a burden on uh, Ministry of Education in terms of those processes that could potentially be removed if we had more transparency in terms of credentials, in terms of verification of those credentials. And that brings me also to the point how a number of processes at universities and schools can be also um, uh, automated. Uh, they can be uh, much easier uh, on, on the institutions. I'm talking from enrollment to, uh, to registering students on courses to fee payments. All this could be streamlined, automated. And I won't go as far to say let's combine blockchain and AI mm. and actually completely automate the process. That would then bring us, obviously, a lot of um, uh, reduced costs related to that. And also, it would remove that risk of error in the process. Uh, I see great potential in that. And, uh, and then furthermore, I would say, not just for, for educational institution, but it also really helps mobility of the workforce. Yeah. And we see that as a very important component of, of economy in this region. Uh, so mobility of the workforce, again, attestation, uh, uh, credentials, trust in, in the credentials, and potentially even I would go as far to, to hope and being very optimistic here that we could uh, globally affect education systems that could uh, become more comparable yeah. um, and, and, and remove the whole need for equivalency, but have it very much streamlined and also help recognize the skills that are um, developed maybe uh, through micro-learning, micro-credentials, lifelong learning is very important because we do acquire so much throughout our uh, uh, working lives uh, and, and very little of that is recorded and then taken as a credential, especially going forward when it comes to uh, finding employment opportunities and so on. So I would say 
mobility of students and, and, and global mobility of students, but also workforce is, is, uh, could, could be enhanced through, through blockchain technology. So it's, it, I think it's very important for us going forward for that to be incorporated. Nice. Thank you very much. I saw Claudio nodding his head there. Um, I, you can follow on with uh, anything as Mina has to say, but uh, on the topic of fostering innovation and industry growth, what are your thoughts on implementation and engaging, actually engaging industry and academia? I think that um, one thing that we need to achieve, uh, I, I like very much what Marcelo was saying, that is, um, we need to look at blockchains and, and all the applications that can be built on top from a completely interdisciplinary manner. Okay, he said it in a different, in, in a different set of words. But um, all these blockchain-based systems are based on a, not only on technical underpinnings, but also on um, economic incentives on the one side. You have governance elements and um, we always need to, first of all, tell the students that this is important for them to get a proper grasping of what is achievable with this. I think that all the strive, and I am going immediately with uh, industry, uh, all the strive by industry to get more developers to develop for the platforms is short-sighted at the end. Because we are talking about processes, we are talking about adoption of uh, blockchain-based solutions in different industries. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, many of the people that are going to be the decision makers are not just the developers. And then uh, we need a continuous, uh, a, a very broad understanding, a very holistic understanding of what blockchains can bring. Mm -hmm. And um, that being said, the other aspect that is very important is um, our role as educators, uh, and the, uh, eventually as well the role of the of, uh, uh, foundations like Cardano and, and others in the ecosystem, it's very important that we uh, also teach all our students, all the people that is going to be using blockchains, to think critically. I think that th there is there are different strands of way in which blockchains are presented, and some. I had the scene of being too enthusiastic for the time being. And I think that this, was, this created a lot of uh, deceit in some of the people that were learning about this and were uh, confronted later with a reality that was much tougher because the facts were not presented. I mean, we have to think that blockchains um, are very complex socioeconomic systems. We will not understand them immediately. We do not know how to develop them. Industry does not know how to develop them yet. They, we are learning. It's a continuous process of evolution. And uh, we have to undergo this thing together, being a very, uh, learn, teaching others to be critical, but also being critical when doing yeah. introspection about ourselves. That's actually quite a nice segue into what Loredana is going to speak on. Um, so thank you so much, Claudia. So I. I'd like to delve a little bit more into the educational strategies propelling blockchain um, forward. And we touched on this slightly throughout this, this panel, but I'd like to unpack that a little more. So um, following on what you were just saying about the critical thinking, um, Laurie Dani, you and I had a conversation and you mentioned one can't look at um, education without talking about the neuroscience. And I know this is an area you're adept at. Um, and you said something quite funny. You said, we as humans are many obstacles to ourselves. Um, could you elaborate on this and the neuroscience behind education and how different people perceive education? That was a very nice chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, I believe you cannot talk about education if you don't associate it immediately to behavioral science. Um, we as humans tend to learn in different ways. We learn differently, we adopt technologies differently, our brains are wired differently. So you cannot teach, you cannot have a solution uh, a one-for-all solution for everyone. Everyone needs to uh, understand that is they're special in their own, you know, human nature, and maybe they can be co-authors of their learning journey. It's majorly what artificial intelligence is doing with recommendation systems, etc. But um, 
I do want to dwell into two main, and I'll make it brief, two main no, no. biases that I believe we have um, that are part of behavioral science when it comes specifically to education related to blockchain. First is cognitive dissonance. For those of you that are not familiar with cognitive dissonance, that um, comes back to us having some ingrained beliefs into ourselves because we are raised a certain way, we have different cultural backgrounds, we have different education levels. So um, cognitive dissonance uh, directly connects to the person rejecting any type of information where their beliefs would be challenged. And what did blockchain do? Surprise, surprise. Um, it's a disruptive technology. It kind of changed the mindset of uh, how people thought about the technology, about the finance world particularly. So it was quite difficult for many people to accept it just immediately. And it followed immediately after cognitive dissonance, having this, this you know, will of rejecting anything that is coming your way, we have a confirmation bias. When I hear something new, and I'm, when I say I, I mean humans, we tend to, and we have a belief already ingrained, uh, we tend to go and search for proof that proves us right. We don't go and search for neutral information. If you go to the internet right now and you just click blockchain, thousands of articles will come out. You have a choice overload all over the place. So how do you make sense of all of that information, right? But when you go and you research exactly why is blockchain bad, and this is just you know, a, 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 an example, there will be still thousands of articles coming out. If you go and search why is blockchain good for enterprise adoption, etc., again, a thousand articles coming out. What we choose to adopt, it's actually you know, inside us. So we choose what we need to, to read, we choose what we need to, to understand. So it is very important to take into consideration these biases that we come with to the table, the education table, yeah. and consider them when we draft strategies about educating other people on the topic. Mm. That's my take on it. Very good. Thank you. Um, Marcelo, you, you, thanks, Loredana, for that. I'm just remembering the conversation well. we had. Uh, um, Marcelo, you touched on this earlier, and I wanted to just circle back um, to the point you had on en enterprise adoption and the strategies. Um, you speak to the role of the, in I mean, yes, you spoke to how to sponsor, how to get your sponsors in involved, but here I want to go into a little bit about the roles of the individuals. and. Um, so can you elaborate on the roles that individuals have to play on, uh, in the blockchain education process? Well, uh, C.K. Prahalad, one of the prominent authors of seminal articles, Strategies and Innovator, many books, he stated in the last, in, at the end of the last century, before blockchain, this, no company in the future can handle strategy and value without talking and dealing with each individual. He used a notation, a statistical notation, capital N, which means, which means population. <laughs> he forgot, it's a joke, of course, he forgot samples. Every company, every strategist would have to deal with individuals. Not customers, not clients, individuals. So individuals has many roles, like satoshis of communities and societies. So you have to handle these roles. For example, another example, I like examples to bring, bring it, to ground it, ground the idea, the abstract thing. Uh, I work in a company, an oil company, for sure the best. And I fill my, my car, I vote, it's a golf company. Uh, I fly by a plane that uses aviation fuel. I have shares of this company. So many roles you have to handle 
And all of these are a big fit with blockchain attributes, what blockchain and tokenization brings to entrepreneurship. So education has to be with handle these roles, handle individuals, handle communities, and handle value, value that comes from all of these many dimensions of, of creating and have value created. That's my, my view about this, this thing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just moving on from the, the role of the individual. Thanks, Marcelo. So we did the, um, Yasmina, we did the beta testing of the Cardano Academy w together with the C Institute. And having met you before, I know that um, you have a lot of thoughts on the integration of blockchain education into non-technical streams. Um, in what ways do you propose integration of blockchain into these non-technical academic streams such as well, finance, business, law, arts, and um, humanities. And why is this integration crucial for the comprehension and understanding of new technologies like blockchain? Well, first of all, I'd like to, to, to thank you for, for doing the beta testing uh, in, in collaboration with the Institute as a, as a researcher and with my team. It's always interesting for us to see um, how would adoption of that type of uh, education flow and uh, what is the feedback, especially uh, before launching something so important. Um, second of all, uh, as we are Sustainability Institute, um, I would say I see a lot of similarities between blockchain and, and sustainability. Now, this might sound odd, but we, we did talk about it. Yeah. Um, sustainability is, a, is an abstract concept, and uh, uh, probably uh, Lordana actually explained it really well, that we have a problem to, to adopt that initially. And I think the, the concept of sustainability is potentially as, as difficult to grasp uh, and as abstract as, as to someone who's not in a tech field to understand blockchain. So I would say there are similarities there. Um, but I do find that uh, blockchain technology education has to be incorporated, uh, obviously, because it's, it's developing and proliferating in, in all different subject areas. So from sustainability, where, for instance, we have a problem of transparency and trust when it comes to sustainability. There is a lot of greenwashing. Uh, there is also a, a lot of what we call green hushing, uh, trying to not actually say what you're doing in terms of sustainability uh, for the fear of, of being criticized. Uh, so, so there are a lot of issues for this concept to actually live and thrive and, and take us to to more sustainable future. Um, so this is where I see blockchain can actually help. So if we utilize blockchain technology uh, for reporting, if we use blockchain technology when it comes to rating systems, uh, when it comes to carbon markets, there's a lot. So then how can you argue against incorporating uh, blockchain technology education into those programs. Uh, and, and there is a, 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 a great uh, array of programs that are in that field. Of course, everybody thinks blockchain technology education could match and be incorporated into finance streams. Now, this is something that typically people do mm. understand. And um, I won't go into details, but it's obviously extremely important. And it's just getting more and more important. I would highlight the importance of incorporating it into entrepreneurship programs, yeah. any sort of business management programs. It will definitely simplify processes. It will instill trust in, in certain processes. It, it will streamline everything. Uh, so also, it's very important that younger generation understands how to become a successful entrepreneur in that field. What are the options? What are the, the ways to do that? What are the potential opportunities in that field? Not to talk about art, digital art. Why not incorporate in those programs? Understand IP, understand in supply chains, tra uh, traceability, transparency. Again, that brings us back to uh, our 
obsession with carbon emissions and actually looking at that in, in green supply chain. So there are so many reasons to incorporate it in different um, educational programs. And I would say I would incorporate it a lot earlier than we get to um, when we are in higher education institutions. Mm -hmm. In a very simplified form, we can incorporate it in, in primary school education. So we're, we're actually contributing to the workforce of the future who come prepared, and this is not some very foreign language. It is not that scary, abstract concept, but it's something they adopt uh, at a very early age, and as, it, as they progress through the education system, they're prepared for the, their, their, their workforce that is prepared to adopt any technology, and, and in this case, blockchain. Yeah. Funny you say that. I was actually speaking to someone earlier about uh, they had an application where they were teaching kids on uh, financial literacy, but including blockchain and gamification. Yeah. It's very, very important. Thank you for that. Just um, to add something yeah, yeah, very, very do. important. Uh, I love what, what Dr. Desmina just yeah. said. Um, I believe very strongly in practical curriculums because mm -hmm. today you have the theory so well, you know, put out, even yes. in every blockchain curriculum out there. I mean, who hasn't heard of Alice Sands Bob one Bitcoin? It's the usual, <laughs> you know, theoretical uh, points of, of, of put, Approach, putting out, yeah, yeah. explaining a technology very theoretically, but we're still lacking those yeah. practical curriculums. Mm -hmm. Like, why don't you, you know, as, as all of us as institutions, apply success or failure of innovation within the education realm. Right. So you are innovating, be that successfully or not, but you are innovating while educating people. So I, I believe in, in emerging both. That's where the future lies. Yeah. Just wanted to add that. <laughs> Thank you. I couldn't agree and more. I, and if I may just add, it's very important to, to to be current, because education can often yeah. lag behind development of technology. I really do believe that the only way for us to be up to date with, uh, with technology is to uh, exactly collaborate and allow uh, providers of this technology and designers to, to, to actually lead that forward and, and have that constant communication between educational institutions and, and, and institutions such as Cardano Academy. Yeah, thank you. And leading on from that, um, Claudia, I know you have mentioned uh, before about hands-on experience. So, um, you know, just mentioning on integration and interdisciplinary education, can you elab uh, elaborate on the fundamental role of that interactivity and that hands-on experience? Yeah I, think, yeah, I think that uh, what Loredana was also commenting now is pretty much in line with the vision that we have for, the, um, for our lectures. And the, the point is the following. I understand that there is a lot of theory that is very well, well presented on how to, a blockchain works. However, if you have to explain a master student uh, all the details of what makes a blockchain work, mm -hmm. and you do it only from a theoretical point of view, you spend yeah. quite a few lectures, a lot of lecture time, only teaching basics that does not lead them closer to what a blockchain is. So actually this year, I, I have been teaching blockchain and crypto economics at the University of Zurich for the last three years, two years, and um, that is an evolution of previous courses. And it, this year we completely changed the, the logic of presenting the, uh, the lectures. So what we do is we, we do a very general introduction of what is the concept beha behind blockchains, because most likely all of us enter into this world in this way. Mm -hmm. And we go directly into practical experiences. Okay, now you create a wallet. Now you run a node and you start connecting to other, sorry, start to connecting to other nodes in the network. You start mining if we are talking about the proof of work based systems. Or for example, uh, this week with the team uh, members that accompanied me to uh, this Cardano summit, uh, we were teaching about delegated proof of stake. And actually, we had a session on um, operation of staking pools in Cardano. Because thanks to the Cardano Foundation, we have our own UCTH Cardano network. Mm -hmm. And we included it in the educational programs that we have. And then after they have learned the theory, how rewards are distributed, that among um, staking pool operators, delegators, they actually operate one in the real yeah. world. And I think that this practical 
because also I, we have to acknowledge something, and it is not something specific to Cardano. In many cases, actual in, in practice, the experience of hands-on is much, uh, it, it, it encounters a lot of difficulties mm. that we would not think if we are thinking about the theory. Mm. And the way in which the students are able to solve the, the, the difficulties of setting up the nodes, running them, getting a, all, a, all the system working, is something that actually allows them, when they want to build in, a, a, applications on top of them, is something that gives them a, a completely different perspective on how yeah. all these systems work. Yeah. And in a way, this brings into another thing that was mentioned uh, as well in a previous round, which is the importance of behavior. Once we have entered into, OK, right. now all this class can act. All of you are going to be staking pool operators. All of you are going to be delegators. We can also create even market dynamics. We can create also behavioral experiments that complement much more all the uh, range of variety that you have of behaviors of the stakeholders mm -hmm. inside of the systems. Amazing. Thank you very much. So we are coming to the close of our session. Uh, but before we do, I just wanted to announce that the Cardano Academy is launching the full uh, Cardano Blockchain Certified Associate course. It will be launched on the 1st of December. Um, the course has four modules and six to eight hours of engaging content. Um, if you are an um, educator or if you are an enterprise, we'd be happy to partner with you and give you the course content to use to educate employees. If you are in, um, the or in academia as well, please, uh, we'd love to partner with you, take the course content, teach it to the students. Um, and if you are just wanting to learn from the course, we have the QR code at the Cardano Foundation booth. Just scan it, register, and we'd love for you to give us feedback on, on the course as well. But it's launching 1st of December and looking forward to everybody taking part. Thank you so much to... Mabruk to Cardano, great achievement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And thank you so much to the panelists for joining. It's been a really um, engaging conversation. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.